I figured I would make a quick video to discuss everything that's happening. The world is kind of at a little bit of a standstill right now. Not a lot of people are kind of upset that they have to stay home or they don't really understand the situation. But here is why it's kind of important to stay home. Uh, if 2% of people, because like most people think, oh, 2% of people die, 1% of people die, it doesn't seem like it's that much. But what people don't realize is if they think that many people are dying, how many people are being hospitalized for this virus? If 10% of people are hospitalized out of 300 some million, that's just in the United States, that's a lot of people. And people don't think necessarily understand that. Because like, then you have the virus, people that are being affected by the virus. And then you have people who are being affected by other illnesses, you know, that happen. So maybe people have chronic illnesses that they uh, has a flare-up or something and they have to be hospitalized for it. Maybe somebody has like a serious asthma attack or something and they have to be hospitalized. The capacity for the virus kind of takes up that, those beds. So there might not be any beds available or maybe like the ventilators, they all take up for like this virus and not the more common cases or something that is more normal. And then people start dying of other things, but it's still related to this COVID-19 virus. And a lot of people are talking about like the economy, the economy is hurting. Well, the economy is going to hurt, but if everybody dies, then the economy can't recover because there's way too many deaths and not enough people to actually buy goods and services to help rebuild the economy. But if we do this, people can go back to their jobs. You know, I mean, sure, some businesses might fail, but a lot of people will be able to go back to their jobs. And the stimulus check will help, it just will take time. And with that, I also recommend that people uh, try and keep up with their bills, even if like the company has given like a waiver or something so that they don't have to pay it like, for the next month or two. Because if you don't pay it in the next month or two, it's like, it doesn't hurt. Just you, it hurts like other people. Now if you don't pay your rent or something, uh, the person that actually gets your rent might need that money. Uh, and if you can pay it, you should pay it. I know it's hard for a lot of people because a lot of people don't have any savings, but I think that's something that should be rectified going forward. Uh, the situation maybe has opened a lot of people's eyes with regards to that. Um, I think a big issue is is that we all just need to stay home. Because the more we stay home, the quicker this will all end, and the less we'll have to worry about in the future. Who knows how long this will actually take, but I would say it'll probably be done by, by May, by the end of May. Uh, just, the hard part is, is we all have people that we would like to see or places we would like to go, and, you know, the sooner this ends, the sooner that can happen. It's just we want to make sure that everybody is safe, and the more people that stay home, the better. Because the more people that get infected, the more people that get into the hospital, the more people that get into the hospital, the more the capacity of the hospital is taken. And another issue is with the capacity of the hospitals is if, like, doctors and nurses and other staff at these hospitals, they get sick, then there won't be anybody to take care of, like, the COVID-19 patients or patients for any other uh, illness or any serious condition. Maybe somebody has, like, a heart attack and they have to go to the hospital. If there's no beds available, then there's no bed beds available for that person to be saved by the hospital. Like people, you know, ventilators for other serious conditions, not just because of this virus. And the more people that get the virus, the less ventilators that are available. And eventually, there will be no ventilators available. And that's actually happening in some places. Uh, and the more serious people take this, the sooner this will be over. Now, one thing that people can do from when they're home to kind of deal with the boredom is like exercise. You know, if you live out in the country. You don't have like a lot of neighbors. You could maybe go for a walk in your yard. Uh, and if you want to help small businesses, like if some of them deliver, you can have them deliver. Uh, but ultimately, there are things that we can do from home. You know, like 100, 200 years ago, it would have been, this would have been much more difficult because of like, the lack of technology and everything. But now we live in like a digital age where we can still talk to the people that matter and we can still do uh, a lot from home, a lot of businesses you can still work from home, telecommute and all that, work remotely. 
but I think the big thing that people need to do is just to stay home, uh, try and help the economy the best you can while being home. Like if you can order food, do it. Now I'm gonna recommend that if you have like a compromised immune system or something that could negatively impact you, if somebody delivering food would happen to have it. But I would say that that's probably unlikely at this point because the more people that are staying home, the less likely that people that are home will be infected. Yeah, thank you. The hard part is there's not a lot of people are being tested, so that's the main issue. But I just recommend, you know, while you're home, exercising, maybe work around the house, clean, stay active, uh, maybe talk to people that you can talk to. We have cell phones now, we can text, some people we can email, um, we can even like, call people and just talk to them. You know, we can just be with people without actually being with them, you know, like, everybody says social distancing, but I don't think that that's what we should really be calling this, I think it should be, like, physical distancing, not social distancing, you know, like, we can still, uh, gather in groups, but just not in person, so we can still have, like, social gatherings, but just not in person, we can also, like, and I don't know why, like, a lot of places aren't doing this, like, churches and stuff, why they don't just have, like, digital services, maybe some places are doing that, you can have like your congregation to digitally get together, not actually being like physically in the same place, and that would that would help, you know, with social distancing uh, or physical distancing rather. I don't know why people are so hung up on like, oh, I can't be around people. You can be around people, just not physically around them. You know, you can be around people in the digital world. You know, like that's one of the great things. Like, you know, it's not great that this virus is happening, but. It happening now is a lot better than it would have happened in like the early 1900s. You know, like limited communication. People might have had phones, but it wasn't easy to talk to people. You know, like sometimes nowadays we can just email somebody or call them or text them, and we can basically have conversations fairly quickly. We can send photos. You know, like imagine trying to do that 100, 200 years ago. It wasn't that easy. Uh, but that's one of the things that I'm focusing on now is just talking to people and, you know, being active, like exercising and, you know, just trying to make the best of this terrible situation, but I am trying to do my part, you know, you have some people complaining, like, I don't want to stay at home or my business is hurting, but, your business might be hurting, but there are other people who are, like, dying and uh, us doing our part, you now it like, helps limit the number of people that are actually impacted by this virus in terms of actually contracting it. Uh, Everybody is impacted, but more people could be hurt by this virus if we did nothing than that are being hurt by it if we do something, like didn't do anything at all. Because uh, like, a lot of people compare this to the flu, but the flu has a vaccine. Like, there are different flu vaccines. People always say it's the flu vaccine or something, but there isn't really a flu vaccine. There are flu vaccines. You know, each strand of has a different vaccine. Uh, this virus, there is no vaccine yet, and they're working on it. Do you know that I'll be tested to make sure that it's acceptable and that everybody can take it? And it's kind of interesting to know, like, one virus without a vaccine can cause all these problems. Imagine if we didn't have any vaccines at all. You know, like, two, three hundred years ago, like, people didn't live to be all that old. You know, like, someone being 50 would have been surprising. You know, like, unless they were, like, wealthy or something, then, you know, they might might have been able to live that long. But, you know, a lot of people didn't live to be all that long, like, two, three hundred, four hundred years ago. People didn't live to be, like, ninety, a hundred. You know, like, the more time goes on, people will live longer as more medical advancements come about. And that is the same with vaccines. Vaccines are a medical advancement that we can all rely on. Uh, and, you know, the more healthy choices we make, you know, the more... We work together, the sooner this virus will be over and the sooner we can all go back to our normal lives. We should just all live our lives as normally as possible until this whole situation ends. And hopefully it ends by June or July and we'll all be uh, back to normal or as, as normal as we can be. I'm going to try and get back into making these videos and work out more and, you know, try and make a better me. But, you know, I'm still talking to people. And I'm still trying to live my life as normal as possible. I think we can all do that. You know, like, you don't have to be bored inside your own home. You can talk to people. You can 
you know, maybe write write a story, uh, you know, engage your mind, maybe take up another language. There's a lot we can do, and there's a lot we can do together. Well, until next time.